If you've used the graph editor in After Effects, you know that it's definitely the way to go for making your animations as smooth and as perfectly timed as possible. But if you've used other animation packages like the 3D animation software Maya, you'll know that it also has a graph editor, but its graph editor has many more advanced features and gives you a lot more control and usability. So the good thing about Cavalry is that it has a very advanced graph editor, very much similar to the Maya graph editor. Editor. And let's take a look and see how this thing works. So I've saved this SVG file out from a design that I made in Affinity Designer. You could save a, probably an Illustrator file uh, as an SVG and import it by dragging it into your assets and then dropping it into your timeline. You could um, also just use one of these shapes here and animate that. It doesn't really matter. I just felt like going with the banana theme today. So I'm going to keyframe this. So I'll double click on it. I also should note that before we do that, I'm going with 60 frames per second, 1920 by 1080, and you could change those to whatever you want. I think the default is 24 also. You might wanna zoom out here so that you could see the ends of your playback area and just scale that back down. So you're not previewing like 300 or 200 frames. Okay, so now let's actually do stuff. So. so remember, double click on it to see its assets here. And then I'll click the keyframe button on the Y value. Now we've got keyframe ability. And then I'll just move it out in time and click and drag down holding shift. So now we've got this here. And let's jump into the graph editor. So if you don't see anything, you might need to select your layer or select your position. If you have other values, you also have the option. If uh, things get out of hand, I'm just middle mouse clicking and dragging to pan. But if I press F with this with this view highlighted, you could see the green line here lets you know that you're in the uh, the timeline area. So you press F, that'll frame up your selection like that. But it has the the shortcut has the added bonus of if I select a banana and press F, that'll frame him up. If I have nothing selected and I press F, that will frame up my composition. So very handy and let's select this value again. And I'm gonna give myself a little bit more room to work here. And then again, I'll just click in here. Nothing is selected, press F, frame that up. Click in here, press F, frame that up. So really fast, really easy. And what I wanna do is, actually I'm gonna use a scroll wheel so I could zoom out a little bit and move this over. I wanna set some looping on here. So I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna hit this first looping button. And now you'll see it loops, but it's not very effective because it just starts back over from the top each time. And what I could do is change the options by making sure this is selected, right click on it, loop after. You could see you got the options to even loop in the, in the other direction too, to the left. But we're gonna go with loop after and click on oscillate. So this loops, but once it hits this value, it reverses direction and you probably can get an idea of where we're going here. So if I select this first keyframe and I go to this interpolation button and hit this second icon here, now we've got a handle and I could click and drag this out here. If I hold down shift, it'll constrain and that is what you want because otherwise you might get uh, like a little double bounce at the top or just not being smooth. One thing is, if I have this at an angle and I want to snap it back to flat again, what I do is right click, go to flatten tangents, and now I've got a nice flat handle and I'll click and hold down shift. And let me zoom out here. I want to uh, make this thing go seamlessly. So I'm gonna stop my playback here and I'll hit the uh, apostrophe and we can see we've got a bouncing animation. And there's one other thing that's really interesting in terms of looping, and I just wanna change some settings here. I'm gonna select these curves and hit this button here to get rid of the handles. I'm also going to select this, right click, go to loop after, set that to none. What I'm gonna do is do a different kind of loop. So instead of oscillate, what I'm gonna do is just hit this button here, and I'm really just using this as a guide. So if I go here, I'm gonna manually set my keyframe for the up position, but this is helpful because I see the exact length that it needs to go because we're halfway in between. And if I go here, this is the timing that I want and it's right in between this second loop. And I'm just gonna add another keyframe in here. 
And if I want to grab the value from this one, what I could do is select it. And you'll see as you click on these, you'll see the, uh, the frame number and the value. So this is frame zero, it's at 184. And I'll press Control C and I'll select this one. And for the value, I'll press Control V. So this is also 184. And we've got something that looks very similar. So what I'm gonna do is marquee select to grab these two keyframes. And then this second interpolation button will give me handles. And this is a, a kind of a neat thing. If I select this one and I rotate it, you'll see this one over here automatically rotates and that keeps my curves tangent. So I, I won't have any weird um, shifting. I mean, it's, it's not necessarily gonna look like a really nice animation, but if we play this, you'll see it does stay smooth and we can make this adjustment so we don't get any weird any weird breaks in the movement at this point and i just accidentally moved my um, playhead here so i think it should be right about here to loop and let's just play that and see how that looks so if you want a uh, smashing banana instead of a bouncing banana you have that option let's just see what happens if we take it in the other direction here all right, so really nice, really handy loopable effects and ways to keep your curve smooth. So let's now clear this animation out. I could just select the Y position and hit delete and that clears out all my Y value. Now I just wanna do some random movements here and I'm gonna start at uh, frame zero and move him over here. I'm gonna set a keyframe on both X and the Y. So if I hold down Alt and click on one of their keyframes, they both get keyframed and then we'll just move in time Move him over, move in time, move him down. Let's call that good. Nothing, nothing fancy here, nothing really special. We have options if I select this curve, double click on it. I don't know if I even have to select it. Yeah, you don't even have to select it. You just uh, double click on one of these curves and you'll get extra keyframes in here that you can mess around with and adjust for, for no good reason other than that they're there. Let's take a look at grabbing all these. Let's just grab everything here. And I don't see the end, so I'm gonna press F to frame this up. And now I could more easily grab this. Hit this button here. All right, so what I wanna do is look at a really interesting feature. And for, for those Maya users out there, this is gonna be uh, something that's familiar. There's there's instances where maybe maybe this on the red curve here for the position X, maybe this is exactly how you want it, the curve from here to here. So if you don't wanna mess with that, but maybe this part here, it's a little too fast of a move here because it's almost completely vertical. That's gonna be a fast move. So what if I wanna just change this part? So I grab this handle and you can see, okay, it's changing that, but we're also changing our curve here. Or we could rotate this to kind of smooth that out. And then because that ghosting is on, we could see the original curve and we could see just how much we're changing this side, even though we might not want to. So one really nice thing is we have the, the Beziers here and we can see this one is like a united handle and this one is a broken handle. So I'll make sure I got this keyframe selected. I'll hit this one here and now I've got a broken handle and actually let's do one more thing before we do that just so we can see how nice this is. I'll give it a slight angle here and now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to, I'm going to break this handle, make sure I got the keyframe selected and I'm going to hit this button here. Now I have a broken handle and there's a keyboard shortcut if you, if you want to do this faster, but this is just more visual friendly. So, and you can see as I move this one, this is completely free and I can make adjustments here and not affect this side, but I am breaking tangency when I do that. So it's not gonna be smooth. So I'm gonna control Z to undo that. So I wanna make sure I don't have the, uh, the keyframe selected, but I have the, just the key, just the handle selected here and I got this. But if I hold on shift, you're gonna see a really interesting thing it constrains it to the same exact angle that it was before, but maintaining tangency because it's not rotating. So now we've made an adjustment only to the right side of this keyframe and we've kept this side exactly how it is. So you'll see if I hold on shift and drag this again, you can make that adjustment 
and not have to worry about adjusting things over here. The thing is now, if you did want to adjust this, you're going to break the tangency. So now what I want to do is select the actual keyframe, not the handles, and I want to hit this button here. This one that looks like two united handles, we hit that. This changes back to a white line. And when I click and rotate here, you can see we have the ability now to make adjustments, but we have one long handle and one short handle. We can rotate them and maintain smooth animation, which is really nice. This is something that exists in Maya. This is something that does not exist in After Effects. So another thing that's really unique and interesting about the software is sometimes you'll get in a situation where your keyframes are a little bit off timed and you want them to be happening at the exact same time or stopping at the exact same time. I can select these two keyframes from these different values and I can hit this align button. This will align to the left, I'll undo that. You can hit this one align to the right and we'll undo that. And if we select both of these, there is this center one, but I don't know if this is a beta issue, but when I click on it, it kind of shifts them over um, in, a, in an unusual spot, or I might just not understand the uh, how that works. But sometimes you're in After Effects and you do something and you move a keyframe and it might go off your timeline, something like this. So we're at frame zero. If I, if I move this over here in After Effects, like this is as far as we can go to the left, but here I got some more room. If I hit spacebar, left click, drag, you can see, you know, sometimes you might want to have a keyframe start before your first frame and be able to make adjustments to it. So it's nice to have the ability to go into the negative area. And one other thing is that, um, well, let's focus just, just on the Y position to see this more clearly. So this is something that does exist in After Effects, which is uh, I can hold down Alt, well, the keyboard shortcuts are different, but I can hold down Alt and left click drag and I can scale only in one direction, which is the horizontal, or I could scale only in the other direction if I hold on Alt and drag up or down. So why is this helpful? Because sometimes if I press if I press F to frame this up or um, you know get to a certain point, somewhere like this, sometimes it's really hard to see like really subtle value changes, even though uh, you know that you need to make adjustments like something like this almost looks flat But if I hold down alt left click and drag and I'll pan this up here Now you could see okay if I zoom in on the vertical now I could really see this and make adjustments Whereas if I just press F to frame this up, it, it's really it's so subtle It's hard to tell that there's much of a change here, but let me just put this in the middle of the screen I'm gonna hold on alt left click and drag and I'm gonna do it uh, here. And you'll see as I'm dragging from here, I'm kind of scaling it. If I'm putting my mouse right at this bottom part here, hold down Alt and drag down, you can see I'm scaling from this point up. If I put my mouse over here, hold down Alt, drag up, you can see I'm scaling from this point and I'm moving it up. So it depends on where your mouse is. And uh, let's frame this up here. So again, Alt, left click, drag to the left and right, stretches it out horizontally. Alt, left click, up and down, stretches it vertically. And this lets you get things precisely where you want them to be. And let's say we, we got a slight, slight movement on the Y here. And let's say you didn't want that. So what you could do is select both of these keyframes, right click in here, go to align keyframe values two, and then it'll give you a number there with a lot of decimals. But this will give you keyframes that are now aligned to the same exact value. So we get rid of that little bit of movement. So that's an overview of the graph editor in Cavalry and some comparisons to After Effects' graph editor. There might be still a few bugs in, in this beta version, but I think hands down, it has many more useful features for, for refining your animation compared to After Effects. This is not too bash after effects i can't really do that because i use it for like 99 percent of my motion design work hopefully this will uh, inspire adobe to update their graph editor or if cavalry keeps getting new features and competes with some of the raster effects that after effects has i could definitely picture myself being happy working in this software full-time